this year. And uh, of course, in, in the first show, I think Suzanne Plachette, of course, played his wife. And uh, Mary Fran had to come in now and kind of overcome that identification, which she has done very, very well. She's the most talented actress. This is her first appearance with us. Would you welcome, please, Mary Fran. because of the, the, the Bob Newhart show before with Suzanne Plachette. Well, there was such a strong identification, and all of a sudden you come in and... I know everybody asks me about this, yeah. and in all honesty, it wasn't difficult. Yeah. And the reason was that, that that show was its own premise, and right. this show is brand new, and the only common denominator, you know, is Bob. Right. I had never met Suzanne, but I did enjoy her work on the show. Right. And, uh, <coughs> you know, she came on the set one day, right. and I had not expected this. I always go to work in the sweatsuits and the, the warm-ups and no makeup. And uh, out of the corner of my eye, when I bounded on the set, I saw this gorgeous brunette. And I said, dear God, I will take any brunette right now except Suzanne Plachette while I'm in the sneakers. And apparently what had happened was the night before, she had run into Bob at a gathering. Right. And we have many of the same people, the same crew. So right. she said, you know, I was thinking of coming on the set and saying, hello, do you think it would upset anybody? And Bob said, well, actually, yes, I think it would upset everybody, but particularly Mary. She said, good, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> just checking you out. Yes, huh? just checking me out. So uh, she did come on the set, and Bob said, Mary, I'd like you to meet Suzanne. So I came over, and we traded some one-liners and some quips, and when she left, I said to Bob and the director, now listen, this is too good. Right. This is not going by without a gag. So Bob said, I'll tell you what we do. We call the producers. And we tell them that you're in your dressing room and you're absolutely outraged and we cannot get you on the set. And you cannot believe that they sent Suzanne Plachette over here. So they did. Everybody believed it. They trooped over and said, what is going on here? And I finally just said, look, guys, I can't keep this up for uh, the whole day. Practical joke. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is a gag. But the producer had come by my dressing room no more than five minutes before that to discuss a scene. Right. And I had said, look, Barry, this is where I think I'm a little uncomfortable. So I said, you know, Barry, I thought I had your vote of confidence after we had that little meeting. And for you to get on the phone and get Suzanne over here to show me how to play the scene, I just think it's just too horrible. So we do a lot of practical joking like that. And that was the first time I met her. You, somebody told me you started out as a TV weather girl. <laughs> yes, really? I did. Did you know anything about weather? Or Nothing. Was just, yeah. Zilch. Remember the boon of the weather girl? Remember when every station Zabuna, had a... Zabuna, the weather girl? I said, oh, the boon of the weather girl. I thought, was... <laughs> I thought you said Zabuna, the weather girl, and I said... She makes, might have been makes one. Makes sense, yeah. She might have been one. Yeah, that was oh, a, I know. Yeah, there was a trend where every yes, station had every a weather station girl. every station had a weather girl. Well, when I left Northwestern, yeah. I went to Northwestern for two years. I left Northwestern. Yay. And uh, my hometown in St. Louis uh, asked me if I would do the weather on the station, and I knew nothing whatsoever, and I thought, well, this is a way to kind of get started and actually be working, get on your feet. They introduced me to a meteorologist, and I said, sir, I do not want to waste your time. Put all those charts away. Do not speak of cumulus and zumulus and etc. This is not going to penetrate or work. So the first night that we did the show, I went out, and I said, I had gone outside the station, looked at the weather. <laughs> Good, thank you. The way all of us do. <laughs> and went on the air saying, folks, it's rain. If I were you, I would stay inside. I'd get by a fire. If there's someone you adore, cuddle up. Right. And I would not go outside. So we went off the That's air. That's really all you want to know. That is all weather. you want to know. Thank you. What's it like outside? Yeah. I thought I was going to get fired. Because the next day, the uh, program director called me in and he said, uh, you know, as a result of last night's broadcast, we had about 500 calls concerning the weather. And I said, uh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm sure you did. I thought, this is it, kiddo. You are going to work at a coffee shop. Yeah. That is where your future lies. And he said, I don't know what you're doing, but obviously it's okay. It's working, so just keep going. Yeah. So I, that's what I kept doing. I didn't even know where the states were. <laughs> this is such an 
embarrassment to admit. And the last night of the show, the crew erased all the states which they had penciled in for me so I would know. So, so the last had to night, point out Montana having, and, you know. and I'm doing sweeping gestures that were so balletic <laughs> that, you know, were across the weather map. So that career. Well, I think weather, you see, they put into the news because they sell, sell that segment and they have to fill the time. I think and all so. most people want to know in Los Angeles. What's it? Is it going to rain tomorrow? Should I take a coat? That's all. Uh, so forth. Exactly. People want to know. Everywhere. We really don't know. Want to know in Montana if there's a, a frost warning. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you're getting on the airplane and going to, to get Montana. up there, you know, yeah. that night. So that was a very uh, brief. I had a br very brief moment. Yeah. How'd you get out of Weather Girl into uh, into the acting? I I actually always wanted to act, yeah. and uh, I had done everything I could in high school and everything I could in college, and I went to Chicago on a vacation, and someone recommended that I go over to um, one of the networks that I did, and they were starting a new television show, which was going to be like um, AM, yeah. LA, uh, that kind of thing, a morning show. And they said, you know, we're going to audition you, but we're going to audition you on film. So they sent me to the Chicago Zoo, because the zoo is so well known. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Gets better. Yes. At any rate, they had just gotten a brand new elephant in the zoo. So the, zoo, the, the zookeeper and I and the elephant are standing in this little space. And during the interview... Oh, you're supposed to interview the keeper of the... The keeper. Yeah. The elephant is moving closer and closer and with great steadiness and great pace toward the little blonde. The zookeeper, however, pays no attention, keeps talking on and on and on about the feeding, the habits. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the elephant. I'm so petrified and hoping to get the job that I just keep talking also right. as if this is absolutely natural. Finally, by the end of the interview, I am against the fence totally with the elephant. And I thought, well, there's only one way to go. If he swoops me up in the trunk, obviously I have a career at Ringling Brothers. Yes. But this one, this one is lost forever.